having a sense of self is very key if you're going into music because people will try to move you down and pigeonhole you down one lane. You know, um, I was often told that I was not going to be able to do classical music and, and gospel music. And let me tell you, both of them bring me money today. Yeah. <laughs> both <laughs> of them make now. me money today. You know yep. what I'm saying? What's going on, everybody? Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Black Student Success Podcast, where we bring you insight and guidance from successful Black professionals. And this is brought to you by Inquire Hire. My name is Self Inquire, and as always, we appreciate your support. So today we have a music educator uh, for you know with over ten years of experience, who's going to talk to us about his experiences, how he's gotten to the point that where he's at. Um, I don't want to box him in as just a music teacher because I think there's a lot of opportunities that you can uh, get with in this career and so he's going to kind of talk about his journey so let's welcome matthew hunter to the show what's going on how you doing hey hey what's going on man thank you so much for having me man this is totally totally dope i love what you're doing man and i'm just glad to be a part of it so thanks for having me absolutely no again appreciate your time so we're gonna start the show like we always do by asking who is matthew hunter oh man so this is like you know you can write a dissertation on something like this so <laughs> i just spent some time thinking uh who is Matthew Hunter? I, I would say I'm, I'm a follower of Christ. Um, I study the, the teachings of Jesus Christ and allow that to be my moral compass for everything that I do. Uh, all the goals and ambitions and thoughts that I have are, are filtered through a lens of what would Jesus do? Uh, and I think that has served as a great manual for me um, to be a good person, uh, to treat people the way I would like to be treated. Um, and I, I just am working so hard to, to be more like Christ and, and has helped me so much in my, in my career just as a person. So in and of itself, if you say, you know, I'm a music teacher, I'm this, I'm that, there's a lot of things. Uh, but at the core of my being, I, I am a follower of Christ. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for that. So now let's uh, let's kind of jump to the the beginning, you know, where it all started for you. So if we were to look, you know, between, you know, the day that Matt was born and all the way through, you know, high school graduation, <laughs> what does, um, you know, what did that music, you know, background, that upbringing look like for you? Uh, well, it started at a very young age around, I would say maybe four, uh, my mother insisted uh, and forced me to take piano lessons as uh -huh. she did for the rest of her uh, children as well. I'm the youngest of three. And we all had to study uh, piano. It started at around four or five. Um, and around elementary, third, fourth grade, um, we were encouraged to <laughs> join the band or orchestra. Um, and I'm trying to be nice because just in case my mom is listening to this thing go. later on. <laughs> but uh, so we had and we had to pick an instrument. So band or orchestra. And we had to maintain that instrument throughout high school. Um, by the time I got to high school, I was able to convince my mother that I just wanted to do choir. Uh, I was like, I'm still engaged as a musician and all that jazz. I just want to do choir. And she allowed me to do that. Uh, and that I maintained that. So my mother was one who really birthed this sort of musical, that and uh, church, uh, growing up in, in the church really sparked my musical interest. Um, and since I was a kid being sort of encouraged to do this classical study, but then also in church uh, experiencing gospel music uh, and, you know, in a sense being exposed to different genres and then trying to bring some of those together, uh, it's been really, really cool uh, just to look back and see the influences that um, that were present in Evanston um, and really also gave me a great appreciation for Evanston and, and the public school system uh, there um, where I met my mentor, Mary Teresa Reed, who's been a, a great influence in my life uh, since middle school at Shoot Middle School here in Evanston. Um, and so I would say between my mother encouraging me uh, the influence of the Black church and gospel music and Mary Teresa Reed. Uh, those were my foundational influences, I would say, um, that helped me be become the music teacher and artist and performer that I am today. Um, it was always something. I was always busy um, doing something music related, um, whether it be for church or school. Um, I started singing with a professional choir when I was in sixth grade uh, uh, called What Women and the Soul Children of Chicago. Um, pretty well-known group within the city of Chicago. Um, I would say pretty well-known within the country as well. 
Um, the, uh, the choir has been on Oprah and a couple other, you know, Ronald McDonald celebrations. And so that actually gave me my first taste into professional performing, where we were performing with Celine Dion, um, Enrique Iglesias. I remember performing for Yolanda Adams, Aretha Franklin, um, and all these amazing people, Albertina Walker, like these were pillars in, in music period. Um, when you think of Aretha Franklin and uh, uh, Celine Dion and all these people, that taught me how to be, how, how to look like a performer on stage, what I should dress like, how I should talk, my demeanor, my, all of that ties into what it means to be an artist. Uh, and that taught me such a discipline as an artist um, at sixth grade, when you think about it. Um, and that is actually the combination of the soldier of Chicago and my training with, with Miss Reed and some uh, collegiate influence as well is how I now teach my choirs. Um, I'm pretty strict, I would say, uh, but I'm fun. You know, you had Miss Reed, you all yeah. you already know. It was a she, great mix. It was a great balance. <laughs> it was a great balance. So I, I would say for my influences from, from when I was born to, to high school, those uh, groups like the soul children and Miss Reed and my, um, training as a classical musician um, as a child, those were the things that served as found foundational influences uh, for the person I am today and uh, an artist I am today. Perfect. Yeah. And I, I like how you pointed out that it wasn't just about the music. You know, you were paying attention to those little nuances that you really don't learn within a class, you know, how they're performing, how they're presenting themselves, you know, these different things that, you know, have come together. And 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 fortunately, with that encouragement of your mom um, over the course of time and and has really built into, you know, what you've done today. Um, so so thank you for for putting that together. Now, you know, moving you know, onto the you know, chapter of college. And I know that, um, you know, as opposed to the, you know, quote unquote, regular college, you know, applicants, where you're, you know, doing an application, you're doing an essay um, for a music major, you're most likely providing an additional component, which is that audition piece. Now, was that the experience for you? And then if so, what did that look like? Um, great question. Uh, and a lot of people don't ask this and don't really know what it's like to, to get into a college of music or a conservatory of music um, here in the States. Um, and, and most places, I would say, will require an audition. Um, as a music education major, I also had a, um, man, it was really, there was a couple different requirements. So there was an audition where I had to pick two or three songs and had to demonstrate at least two to three languages um, because that would be what you would be exposed to as a vocal uh, student in the, in, a, in the College of Music. Uh, we would sing in Italian, German, French, and English, hmm. I believe. So we had a semester on each. So it would be like a, a dictation class where you would learn how to speak the language um, in terms of how to what words and sounds and the vowels and, and such, you wouldn't be uh, fluent by any means, yeah. but um, you would have an idea of how to speak the language. So we would do an audition where you sing uh, at least two to three different languages. Then I had an interview. I had a sit down interview because I was going into music education. So they wanted to talk to you about what it means to be a teacher or why you want to be a teacher. Um, and I was able to share with them some of my own experiences in choral leadership uh, in high school, uh, in different musicals and such, just being a leader for, for that or being an assistant for Miss Reed uh, in high school. I also conducted choirs of my own um, in high school. So I did uh, a community choir, community gospel choir, and I was a youth choir director for church in Evanston at Second Baptist Church. Uh, and so those experiences I shared with them. So they were like, oh, okay, so you pretty much are already a music teacher. You just need the degree. And I said, I'm so glad you, you said that and you think that way. So let's, <laughs> I'm like, let's get this moving on. Just give right, me the degree. I, I mean, gas me up, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, gas me up and give me my certificate. Give me my yeah. credential. Um, but so there was the audition, the interview, and then I had uh, a music theory placement test, uh, which would allow me to either test out of music theory, which are, it's just like foundational structure for the rules of music, uh, more of a Eurocentric, um, sort of idea of the rules of music. Uh, I wanna make sure I'm clear with that. Uh, 
but I also had to do a sight reading. So I had to sing, you know, they would put a piece of music in front of me and they would say, okay, sing it. So something you've never seen before. Mm. Um, luckily, I think it was a familiar tune. Once I started singing it, I think it was America the Beautiful, but the words were stripped away and it was just the vocal line. So it's oh. like, you have to get, you get one note um, and then you are supposed to sing the excerpt. Uh, so those, that cons- that was sort of my, compartmented, I would say, uh, audition and requirements, as well as getting into the university as a whole. You just don't get into the the School of Music through your audition. That's great. But if the university is going to um, not accept you as a student, none of that other stuff matters. Mm -hmm. So I had to do my own paper. I had to do, I think even for the College of Music, I had a separate paper, which was my philosophy, I think, or uh, of music education. Boy, that was a long time ago. I'm trying to remember all the requirements they made me do. Um, But it it was, a. I remember it being extensive. Yeah. I remember it being extensive. So um, exciting to, to be on that campus and to, you know, Beaks working with the professors. So those people I auditioned for were my actual professors that I would be taking classes with. Uh, the interview was was given by professors that I would be taking classes from. So they were very hands-on. It was a really great experience uh, in terms of the audition uh, and, and very thorough when you think about it. You, know, you have to go through all these steps so they have an idea of who you are as an individual and a musician. Nice, nice. So yeah, it sounds very extensive. And, and I'm <laughs> glad that you're able to break that down, be, especially for those who are listening who might want to, to major in the music, whether they're in the education side or not, having those those different pieces on top of just the normal college application stuff and, and being able to manage all of that. So, um, so I mean, it sounds like you were able to, to piece it together and still um, have everything come together as a whole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was... Um... I, I was ready. I was excited. Um, it just kind of, I think when you're going off to school as a freshman in college, you're always, you know, looking for like the perfect fit. Uh, and I would say that pretty much sealed the deal when I went to audition at Michigan State. It just, it felt, even just being on the campus, it felt like this is where I belong. Um, and it was great um, to work and meet all those professors uh, prior to my arrival. Um, and then when I got there, you know, hit the ground running, get to work, prove myself. You know, they've they've heard me sing, they've heard me perform, but now it's like, you know, can you can you can you sustain this? Can you yeah. be this artist for this amount of time? Uh, and can you can you grow? Um, and it was just uh, a great opportunity for me um, as a musician and an educator. Um, really, the two were able to just mature during that time in college. Perfect. Nice. So um, now, now getting on the campus and now have, you know, uh, started and, you know, uh, started as a student, what was that experience like just kind of being on campus, being a music major? What were, you know, what were those experiences like for you? And then where did you find the support, you know, as you were kind of getting through that whole degree program? Man, uh, I would say this, it was, it was a little overwhelming. Uh, at first, because Michigan State was a pretty large university. Uh, and so coming from a very large high school, I was thought I would be fine. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm used to a large environment where a lot of students are. Um, but it was oh, the, just overwhelming a little bit, you know, yeah. the first semester, trying to find your way, trying to find the classes. And this, I, I, I want to say, if I remember correctly, Michigan State is about 5,500 acres, I want to say, because mm. um, I was a tour guide. That was a fact I should have remembered. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're supposed to remember those fun facts. Oh, of um, course, of course. <laughs> but I would say what helped me become more comfortable, um, and I'll get to the part about being a music student more specifically in a minute, but I think what made me feel more comfortable when I found my niche was through the Michigan State Gospel Choir. That was where I found most of my friends. Um, and uh, I found like my church home through that choir and the networking through that group really met, met me with my spiritual sort of desires in terms of many people who are also Christians and all of that great stuff. So that actually is what allowed me to feel more comfortable, not only the being involved in the gospel choir, but being involved in other things on campus, uh, Black Caucus and uh, a few other things. You know, I was singing in acapella groups and doing various things. And this is my one recommendation for anybody coming into a new school, um, get, especially if it's a larger school, get involved. 
once you get involved in student organizations or once you get involved in a, like a part-time job, the, your surroundings will become smaller over time because things become familiar and people become familiar. So you'll be on campus and you'll walk around and you'll see somebody from the Black Caucus meeting or you'll see a friend from uh, the gospel choir in the library, or you'll see, you know what I'm saying? So it's important. A lot of people are just, um, they get nervous and they just don't get involved. They don't do anything. They're waiting for someone to come to them and pull them out of that shell. But what's really important, if you want to get acclimated with your surroundings, you take the initiative and get involved. And I think that is what really helped me um, allow Michigan State to become more of a home. And when I came back as a sophomore, I was good. I knew where everything was. I was confident. I was comfortable. And it was mainly because I got involved. Uh, what it was like as a music student, um, it was interesting, I would say. Um, I wasn't caught off guard by the fact that there weren't a lot of Black people. Um, I, would, I knew that going in, that as a music major of any sort, I would be the um, and navigating that space um, was challenging because I just didn't know who to trust. I didn't know who really had my, my best interest at heart um, as it pertains to friends in the College of Music and as it pertains to professors. Um, it is just the reality of being a Black person in this country. It's like you don't feel like you can just trust people on site um, who don't look like you. And I struggled with that because when we dealt with issues of race or those, um, the spirituals came up in choir or, or gospel choir, you know, I didn't know really how to respond in a way that I felt was genuine and authentic unless I really knew the teacher. Yeah. Uh, there were a few professors and teachers that I knew it was, there was no issue whatsoever. Um, gosh, I had so many great professors. I hate to, you know, miss uh, any and say any, but I, I must give, um, a shout out to Don Reed, Dr. Sandra Snow, um, Molly Fillmore. These are people who really had such a strong impact on me as a, as a black student where I would feel comfortable being myself. Um, and it was, it was challenging. You know, there was, I, I tell this story now, I'm almost like embarrassed to tell this story, but it's important because I, how we advocate for ourselves as people of color in white spaces is so important. It's so important to know how to deal with situations, how to be respectful, especially things that make you upset. Uh, so let me share this with you. My freshman year, um, I was in an opera uh, called Tales of Hoffman. And there is a scene in the opera where uh, everybody is uh, our dolls. We are all dolls that come to life and we are singing. It's a beautiful, be beautiful opera. Go see it, Tales of Hoffman. All right. Um, <laughs> But in, in that scene, everybody was a different character. I was one of maybe three black people in the show. Um, and in this particular scene, I played, do you know that toy that's like a, a monkey with symbols? Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. With a little red top hat and right. a little red suit. Yeah, a little that wind up thing in the back, yep. Yes, no. <laughs> way in the world should you have a black person playing a monkey on a stage absolutely <laughs> no especially oh, no. if you are a white institution especially if you know your show or your whatever is predominantly white um that's just not okay mm -hmm. i didn't have the agency and the words to articulate because i was a freshman i was like i'm trying to impress them yeah. i don't want to see like this pro-black person that is going to be problematic for the next four years um, and so I didn't feel confident in saying that I am uncomfortable, that this is not okay. Um, and I just wish I look, but when you think about stuff that you wish you would do differently, like, man, if I had the opportunity to go back, I would say, no, this is not okay. And if I'm going to be a monkey on this stage, I would be nothing at all in this show. Um, I just wish I could have, I had a voice at that time. And so that has inspired me. That experience alone has inspired me to make sure my students have a voice mm -hmm. before they leave high school, because we will be put in situations, especially students of color, mm -hmm. will be put in situations in which they are going to have to know how to advocate for themselves on their part-time job, in their classroom with a professor who might be giving preferential treatment to other people and not them, or whatever the case may be. When you are out in that real world as 18, 19, 20-year-old, you have to have that 
ability and knowledge of how to navigate those spaces and how to advocate for yourself when things are not okay, when they make you feel uncomfortable, when something was said that is inappropriate. Um, I think the generation today is farther along than maybe we were mm -hmm. um, in terms of advocacy for themselves and knowing what to say. Um, but I think that is so crucial and important. Um, and that helped me as that experience in, in college helped me understand the importance of that for students of color and, and helping them with the words, how to say this, what to say, what to look for, you know, <laughs> what to look for when stuff is sketchy. And it's like, ah, no, that right there, double click on that. Cause that might be a problem. You know, that's problematic. So, um, my experience was filled with with very different, with a lot of great, I don't want to make this feel like <laughs> my experience at Michigan State was <laughs> negative, but there were some things that were impactful, right? Mm -hmm. That that impacted and changed my trajectory um, as an individual um, and as a musician. Uh, but overall, I would say that I had a, a positive experience, uh, thankful to those friends of mine and professors who really helped me um, who saw more in me than I saw in myself uh, and helped me get through the program and graduate and, and you know, set me on the journey to, to the Matthew who is standing or sitting before you today. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. I, and, you know, even with those negative experiences and kind of reflecting on and saying, oh, man, I wish I could go back and, and do that differently. Now, if you didn't have that opportunity, that wouldn't have, you know, um, uh, change the, the way that you teach now, you know, having that emphasis on giving your students a voice. So, um, you know, fortunately it was one of those things that you were able to get through, but knowing that it was, you know, something that really put a mark on that teaching ability that you have and really, really looking out for your students and, and their best interests so that when they get out to the world, they're really prepared for those things that you don't really learn in a textbook. You don't know how to navigate those spaces and, and have reactions that have a good balance. Right. So, um, so I think that, I think that's awesome that that was a product of what that situation was. Um, but but even more so, I'm I'm glad that you talked about getting involved. You know, I've always been an advocate about um, you know trying to kind of do do new things or do things that you like. You know, because you have those resources available as a student, right? So it's it's really good that you not only found things that you want to do that have helped kind of build yourself as an artist, as an educator and things like that, but you did find those ways to, to find people who, um, you know, who are, you know, uh, supportive of what you're doing. And um, you probably have some lifelong friends after that as well. So, uh, so I think that's really good that you pointed that out. Um, now you've talked about, you know, being, uh, you know, director of choirs, you know, music teacher and things like that. And, um, you know, even having some opportunities to perform, what are some of those opportunities? And maybe you can kind of get into some of them of, of, you know, the difference, either jobs, gigs, opportunities that you've gotten, you know, since graduating, you know, with this music education degree. Wow. Um, you know, one thing that I said, I would say that surprised me about my experience as a music teacher, um, the credentials of having my degree in, in music education. Um, I'm surprised at how many jobs I'm, I was able to get <laughs> just by being uh, a, a music teacher and having various experiences. So for one, as, a, as an artist, period, I, I identify a lot of music teachers as artists because a lot of music teachers perform as well. Um, you, everybody will have their specialty. Um, and depending on what your specialty is, it could be German song, German art song, German leader. Uh, it could be gospel. It could be a style of genre. It could be whatever. Uh, it could be actual vocal technique. Everybody has like their niche and their sort of specialty. And when you are good at something like that, then people will have you come and work with their choirs because they heard your choir do A very well or B very well. Um, so I think I was... I'm not even sure if I had completed my degree yet. I think I may have been a senior and I was invited to be a guest um, clinician, choral clinician for the MSU Children's Choir. Um, there were, the director at the time had invited me to come. They were working on a, a gospel piece. 
And she knew that I sang gospel music and, and had performed gospel music on, at Michigan State and did it well. And so she wanted me to come and help with the authenticity of the sound and the techniques and sort of style of gospel music. And the MSU Children's Choir is a Grammy Award winning children's choir. So this was like a big deal for me where I, would, I came in for one Saturday um, to, to do the coaching and working with them. And then because it went so well, she invited me to, to come and conduct it at their concert. Mm. Um, so now I became a from a uh, went from a guest choral clinician to now the guest conductor uh, for this amazing concert. Um, so that just came from me doing something uh, my specialty, which is gospel music, I would say, uh, and doing it well. But then having the ability to teach it, yeah. right? So I think you don't. Some people say, "Well, you don't know what you know until you have to teach someone else how to do it." Um, and so I, I was excited because I had the skill set from my music education background and teaching, and then my experience of singing and performing gospel music. And I put them together. And now, not only can I teach you to do what I do, but let me then model it for you. Nice. That is powerful. That is like the best street credit that I can have as a teacher, <laughs> as a choir teacher, because it's not that I'm going to tell them to um, do this. Uh, and they not really have the context of, well, well, what do you mean do that? What do you mean? Do I say, ah, let me demonstrate from you. Then I will sing myself. And they're like, oh. Uh, and I'm like, yes. So it is, it's wonderful to be a music teacher or a, specifically a choir teacher who also can model well for them at a high level, right? Yeah. Not just like, oh, I, this, I, I get what he tried to do. <laughs> no, it's like, no, I did it. Now you do it. Um, so I think that's, that's wonderful. Being a guest clip, Choral clinician. Um, I'm often asked to do that. Um, I'm often asked to bring my choir somewhere to perform. And so that's like, those are performing opportunities. Um, I am the, I'm an adjunct faculty member at the College of Lake County, um, where I teach uh, the gospel choir there. So not only am I a regular, well, I wouldn't say a regular, <laughs> but I am a teacher, uh, uh, a normal high school teacher, but also an adjunct faculty member. What a great thing to add to my resume, all from my experience performing music, uh, gospel music, uh, and musical theater. And, you know, I, someone just gave them my name and they called me, talked to me on the phone and offered me the job. Um, people asked me to come and sing at um, banquets and celebrations and all of these various different things. I had no idea that as a music teacher and through my own musical experiences that we discussed from Evanston on the way up through college. And now um, people just call my phone for various different things. Um, I work with the gospel choir at Northwestern. Um, I've been performing virtually for some theater companies in Chicago uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so there've been a really, it just blew me away. Yeah. If, if someone told me that, Matt, you're going to have all these opportunities because of your music degree or, you know, when you graduate, you're going to be fine. It's going to be great. You have multiple streams of income, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, not with this degree. I'm going to have to do a little bit more than that. Yeah. Um, but because I worked really hard um, to, to be good, to be excellent, I really strived for excellence. Yeah. Um, and, and what I did as... Um, as a performer and as an educator, because my grandmother always told me as a black man, you're gonna have to be twice as good. Mm -hmm. um, when you go into those spaces in which uh, people do not look like you, you are gonna have to dress the part, you're gonna have to speak well, you're gonna have to do all of these things that then possibly open up a door of opportunity. Um, and so you'll get that with a lot of African-American uh, people throughout the country who know I have to be twice as good. That is just like one of the norms. I would say mm -hmm. any other black professional I've ever met has always told me, yeah, of course I got to be twice as good yeah. just to be at the level of what may even be mediocre, you know, for <laughs> others. And you Just let's be real, yeah, right? Absolutely. We go into these settings and it's like, I got all these credentials and stuff like that, but you don't treat me like I have this experience. You don't talk to me. You don't, you know, put me in uh, levels uh, or have opportunities you know, to showcase all of this, stuff. I, but I got to prove it. I got to volunteer so that you see, oh, he could do that. Okay, great. Well, maybe we'll give him this or maybe we'll yeah. give him that, you know? So I think that factors into some of that, but yeah, man, it's, it's been amazing. I would mm -hmm. say to, to be a working artist and music educator 
uh, after college, I, I would have never thought that opportunities would come the way they have. So I'm very yeah. grateful for that. Absolutely. Nice. Nice. And I think, I think the, the recognition alone for the fact that, you know, you can just get a phone call and then by the end of the phone call, you can get a job offer just from people knowing you from the, 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 the work ethic that you have. So even if you have those times where you don't feel like you are getting the credit that you deserve, you are getting it from other areas. And so uh, I'm glad that, you know, you putting in that hard work. And I think it's a little bit easier once you're passionate about what you do that, you know, it all came together. Um, so, so, that, so, so but, but that, I'm sorry. It's, no, go, go ahead. Go hit, ahead. You just hit a good point when you said that, you know, when, when people would, could, could call you and give you an opportunity, that is because people saw my work. And so, whether it will, it, and that's a, that's a big thing that I tell my students, you never know who's watching. Mm -hmm. You never know who's watching. I don't care if someone gives you an opportunity where only six people showed up. You don't know the opportunities that lie in the room. Yeah. So I have no, I don't have a, an opportunity to be mediocre. I have to be on my game when I'm out and about doing whatever I'm doing because I've seen these things happen where people, every job that I have today was because someone called me, even my job at, at Niles West High School, shout out to Niles West and Skokie. Um, <laughs> my job there, someone called me and said, there is a job here, you should apply. Um, Northwestern, they called me, the church that I serve at, they called me. And it's because every opportunity, and this is for any profession you go into, when you get an opportunity to show off, and show the best things about yourself and the things that you've been, um, you've trained and studied and all of that. You've got to show your best because you never know who's in the room, you know. So I, that was like the biggest takeaway I would say for me too, coming from you know, college and and all of that stuff. To know that every time you get to perform or every time you get to teach and show what you do, it's an opportunity for you to show your work. And so you've got to make sure that you. Are prepared for that uh, because your next job might be sitting in that room. So that's that's important. <laughs> okay. Well, many many layers to that. Um, yes. you know, <laughs> many layers to that. So, um, getting into something else now. Um, you know, when it comes to you know your identity as a as an educator, you know, you know, uh, black man. Um, you know, you're you know coming from you know Evanston, you know where we grew up. Um, you know, how is it how important is it to you know to to be in the position that you're in as a black male teacher? You know, uh, something that you probably don't see too often, or maybe you have to wait until you get to high school before you see your first male black teacher. So, what is it like being in that position? Yeah. Wow. Um, I would say my my presence as a black male teacher in at Niles West and just in general and anywhere because there's not a lot of us. Um, it it represents possibility. I would say, um, growing up as a, as a kid in Evanston, I never thought that a viable profession or uh, like being the president or something was an option for me because I hadn't seen it. People who, you know, kids nowadays, you know, can say, oh, maybe I'll be president because Barack Obama was president. We didn't have that when we were growing up. So it's hard for people of color to imagine what the possibilities are when they don't see it. Yeah. You know, um, so me being a black male teacher, black male choir teacher shows other black students that they can do it, too. Um, but we have to be in it. We have to be in areas where those students don't see it a lot. So there's definitely not a lot of black teachers or black male teachers. In my experience at the places I've taught in Evanston and the North shore, black male teachers, there's just not, just not a lot of us, yeah. especially when you think of, excuse me, at the elementary level. Um, when I taught in Evanston and you know, Evanston is a very diverse place, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I was, a, I was a music teacher in two different buildings. Um, and in both buildings, I was the only black male teacher in both buildings. Damn. You had, you had, you know, TAs and you had, you know, people who may have worked in the office or whatever the case may be. But when you think about classroom teacher, I was the only black male classroom teacher in two buildings. And, and it threw me a little bit because I was just like, 
where we at? Yeah. <laughs> where, where, the <laughs> you know, be, where the rest of us at? Yeah. You know, but um, it, it just opened my understanding to like, dude, it's just so important for you to be excellent in this role, you know, because people need to see what the possibilities are. And that if you only have one black male, if you only have one black teacher, period, a lot of my students, I'm their first black teacher, period. And they're yeah. in high school, right? Their experience with me is going to be imprinted on them for a lifetime because everybody, you know, for for the most part, remembers their first black teacher, um, especially if they were not in a, a diverse environment. Um, so for me, being a black male teacher today represents opportunity. And I take that very seriously for younger students who are coming up so that they can know that they can do it too. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I would have been a music teacher if I didn't have Miss Reed, a black female music teacher. I would not have thought that that was an option um, for me because I, I never saw it. Yeah. Uh, and so she represented possibility for me. And that's why I am who I am today is because I saw it. And so I think it's so important for us um, as black uh, as black people to really venture out to find different things that we're good at and that we enjoy and that we like so that we can pursue those passions, even if there are not a lot of us in that field. Um that we can then show representation in those in those uh, fields and those uh, job opportunities and, and and positions, so that younger people grow up understanding that this is possible because I've seen it. So that's yeah. what that means to me, man. It means a lot. Absolutely, They're very very impactful. And yet, yeah, all all it takes is one. All it takes is one. All it takes one, is one person, and then it's like, okay, now you just open up my whole world to to yeah. what what can happen. So, um, so so thank you for that. Now, before we do wrap up, I got one more question for you. Now, anybody who's looking to pursue music or or study music, you know, what advice would you give to them? You know, before they start getting into that role or even you know maybe they're in high school maybe they're in middle school what advice would you give to them to kind of put them on that road to success um so i i would say well a couple things um be consistent um if you're going into music as a teacher a performer both is a type of performance like for me, being a teacher, that's a type of performance. It is a way that I teach to engage, to draw students in, to keep their attention for 42 minutes. That's a type of performance. Um, and I need to be consistent. So that means I'm, I'm, if I know what it takes to be good, to be great, to be excellent, I should strive to do that every time, no matter where I am. You know, again, pointing to the fact earlier that we said anybody could be watching you. Yeah. So be consistent, be consistently great. Um, that's one thing. Two, get used to criticism. Um, people will criticize your work all the time as a, as a musician, as an artist. It is just the nature of the beast. You have to get used to that. Get used to people not liking your stuff or telling you no, right? Um, an artist should fall in love with rejection uh, in order for them to be successful. Fall in love with rejection because that is like, okay, you didn't like it, fine. You didn't like it, fine. It, it causes you to go back to the drawing board and create a de and develop a sense of self, an identity and knowing what your art is, your artistry, what you present. Um, having a sense of self is very key if you're going into music because people will try to move you down and pigeonhole you down one lane. You know, um, I was often told that I was not gonna be able to do classical music and, and gospel music. And let me tell you, both of them bring me money today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> both of them make now. me money today. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like you just, you have to gauge, you know, what you're, how you're doing that. And um, I, I also sing musical theater. I also sing jazz. Like I, I, I allowed myself to have that open platform to, to explore. Um, but that's, I, I knew that's who I was. And so I did not allow anyone to pigeonhole me down one lane or one, one way. Um, so that that's important as well. And find a mentor who has been where you are trying to go. Try to find someone, especially if you are a person of color, find another person of color who has been there and done that so they can speak to the experience and that, you know, you have someone who's not thrown by the stories you tell them. Oh, can you believe they did this? And I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I believe it. <laughs> yep. 
So it's good. Let me tell you how to respond. Here's the next steps. Mm -hmm. You need a mentor. You've got to have a mentor. And I'm just saying that for any profession. Absolutely. As a person of color, have a mentor who is in the field that you are trying to be in or get into because you will avoid pitfalls, mistakes, all types of things. Um, If you listen, humble yourself. Do not think that because you're good at something that you are the best. Um, You need to humble yourself and learn from others. Um, I learn from my colleagues all the time uh, who are younger than me even. You know, um, you can learn from anyone. So having that openness to learn, um, having a mentor, all of those things that we we just meant, those are so key. And it's like, oh man, you listed like six things. It's, you know, it, you, you got to just do more than one thing. Yeah. You know, if you want to be able to, to connect, if you want to have um, so many different types of opportunities in your career, um, those are the things that are going to broaden the perspective that you have as an artist and as a musician and as a teacher, um, and hopefully will grant you um, opportunities to, to go into various different things, even to travel. You know, people have have um, hired me to sing ab- ab- abroad. You know, I've, I've gone and sung in, in China and I've, you know, it's it's been great. Uh, so you just never know. So those things will help guide your career and open up opportunities that you would have never imagined. There you go, very well put. Thank you for that. So um, now before we do close out, um, I've got a few fun questions for you. So um, just looking to get your personal and professional opinion on these. So uh, first we're gonna start off with Apple or Spotify? Apple. Apple, okay. Apple's <laughs> in the lead. <laughs> Listen, I don't know a lot about this Spotify stuff. That came after my, I don't know. I was maybe late to the to the party with Spotify, but I'm not, I'm not well versed in that. So Apple all the way, baby. Apple all the way. All right. All right. Now, um, name one underrated TV show, you know, one that doesn't get enough credit and then name one overrated TV show. Let's see, man. Um, that's, that's hard. I would say that's hard. Um, I really liked um, House. Mm. Um, I don't know. That wasn't, I, I knew that was popular, but. I don't think it was as big as it probably should have been because I really thought that show was excellent. I thought, yeah. just loved it to death. Yeah. Um, the show I thought was overrated or um, Friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fr- I'm just being honest. Like Friends is very successful and ran for a lot of seasons. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. wasn't that impressed. Yeah. Um, I thought it yeah. was funny. It, it just depends on the humor you're used to, right? Right, um, right. So it just wasn't my my favorite. One well, your but cup of tea. Yeah, go. All good, all good. All right. <laughs> now, um, now we all, you know, I, I love when we throw out, you know, um, you know, whenever we want to use our black card, right? Um, you know, this is mm-hmm. you know fun fun way to banter and everything. Now, if you if if this was a really official <laughs> thing, and you were to pick one thing that you know everybody should experience, um, you know, to to obtain their black card, what would that one requirement be? everything that they should experience anything uh, anything they should experience let's yeah. see oh uh, man you got to experience going to a black church there you go <laughs> you need to go to the ch- there's or there's one on just about every corner i'm sure mm-hmm. wherever you are especially if you're in a, a big city go to a black church that is an experience that every black person should have cuz i was going to say macaroni and cheese but <laughs> which that, which is yeah, good which is good which is, but i want to i want to support my vegans out there i know y'all I, I love y'all vegans out there so that wouldn't be a, a universal experience that would be the same for everyone They're but right. nine times out of out of ten if you go to a black church it's probably gonna be similar yeah. you know in detroit <laughs> similar in la similar in chicago so perfect. black church per- experience <laughs> perfect all right now um top three memes of all time oh memes um well i everybody loves that michael jordan where he's crying that meme Uh that's there kermit the frog sipping Mm. tea that's Uh one and my most recent favorite is um the animaniacs uh sort of play on the young lady who 
stormed the Capitol and no. she said they pushed me out and maced me. <laughs> oh, you got to find that. That's how, how perfect was that? <laughs> how Dude, perfect was I wish that? I would have came up with that and put it together myself. Yeah, but that it, was just it's gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't think they adjusted that. I think that was the actual tone that she had that matched up with yes. how they normally go. So yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> I think she they sped, I think they sped up her um speech so that it would be rhythmically into what the song was going mm-hmm. but otherwise they had to add nothing else to it she just gave them that gold mine and yeah. man that will go down in history as one of my favorite memes of absolutely. all absolutely perfect <laughs> now last one um and it's really cool that you had the opportunity to you know perform with and for you know different artists but if there was one artist that you wanted to uh you know just either perform with whether it's one song an album whatever the case is who would that be man um that that's that's, that's so challenging uh, because <laughs> there's so many amazing um people that I would love to, to work with and just, and just learn from, um, gosh, that's so hard. I mean, you have the hardest working female in the show, in show business, which is Beyonce. Um, and so if, if I wanted to say work, because what I, I would learn from her, Mm. I would learn from her grind. I would learn from her rehearsal process. I would learn from, you know, all of that. And as an artist, you gotta, you know, sort of watch these people and take notes. And there, she's Beyonce for a reason, mm-hmm. right? So I would say I would just put out Beyonce because not only would it be fun to work with her, but man, I would have a notebook full of notes from yeah. the process oh, if we yeah. had to do a performance together. And I would like thank you. This masterclass was great. I appreciate you. So <laughs> yeah, I'll say Beyonce. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, to be a fly on the wall to see everything that happens behind the scenes and how Dude. all that gets put together. Yeah. It's genius. Yeah. A lot of and just her how she works with her team as well. So I know all the ideas don't come from Beyonce herself, but how she utilizes her team. Um, you know, they have created a spotless, almost spotless image for her. Her yeah. brand is, you know, just what it is. And so how she did that, um, not that I can learn all that from one performance, but I can pick up a little bit. So mm-hmm. Beyonce knows Carter, I would say, will be the one. <laughs> Perfect. What will we sing? I don't know the song. I don't know. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it's Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> it's Beyonce. What do I do? <laughs> Perfect. Well, Matthew, thank you for this. This has been amazing. Um, you know, to really talk about your journey and all of your experiences, and then just what you have to, you know, teach everybody. So, um, before we do close out, I just want to give you an opportunity. If there's anything that you wanted to plug, if any, um, if you have any contact information for any of our listeners, if they have any questions, I'm going to give you the floor. Uh well, again, if if anyone wants to reach out and 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 follow me on uh, Instagram or Facebook, you can look up my name, Matthew Hunter, for Instagram. It is I teach music, M U Z I Q. Um, feel free to follow me on there. Uh, but I just also wanted to just uh, give a shout out to all of our theater companies and artists, performing artists who are no who are currently not working. Um, if there are funds that you guys know of out there to support and give your, if you have money to give, please do. Our artists out here um, are on unemployment um, if they're lucky. Um, and some artists are just, you know, just trying to make it. So um, if you can, please give. If you know that there are theater companies doing fundraisers and stuff, if they're doing a show on Facebook and they're charging $5, please pay that $5 and support them. They're trying to eat. They're trying to pay their bills. They're trying to, you know, they're trying to survive through this pandemic. Uh, and, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon in terms of being able to get back and perform in, in concert halls the way we all have done for so long. So please support the artists right now. Um, at Because the funny thing, what's going to get you through the pandemic is art. Um, you know, we're, being creative as possible to still put out CDs and put out albums and give you virtual performances and all this. And it's amazing. It's really great stuff. And people are at home watching it because you can't do anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're providing you work. Please go out and support these artists out there because it's hard out here right now for us. Um, So please go out and support. I'm sure they will greatly appreciate it. 
Yes, please, please do support all those artists out there. So again, Matt, thank you for, for your time, um, for your knowledge and everything. Uh, thank everybody for listening, however you're consuming this podcast. Uh, don't forget to follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. That's at Inquire Hire. And you can check out our website, inquirehire.com. We've got a wealth of information there. Uh, we try to cover as many careers there. So if you have um, anything that you want to see on that website, just feel free to reach out to us. Um, so again, until next time, peace to you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.